Now I tell you what the hell that was. That was a damn good show. Sorry, Miller, the bored asshole here. Just throwing a random video up at a nuts time here in the UK is super late. Uh, but if you don't know, in case you're interested, probably not, but I'm going to tell you anyway. The reason I got into this whole YouTube game and everything that I do is I used to work in video games. That's what I used to do. I used to edit magazines and I used to review them and do all that kind of stuff. So when a new video game console does get some new information or gets, gets some new news, I still get quite excited about it because I am a loser, I am a nerd, I am a geek. We've talked about it many a times, but we've also talked about how being a loser, being a nerd and being a geek is actually the best thing in the world. It's like a contradiction in terms. In case you don't know, I'm sure you do. That's why you're watching this video. Yeah, PlayStation, Sony just had their big We'll call it a reveal event because there was a reveal of sorts towards the end. Uh, showed off some new games, just promoted it. It's coming out at the end of the year. And the first thing I want to talk about is the console itself. Like I said, the last thing that we saw was the console. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, that's nice. It's a PlayStation Swan. And then realized it was a PS5. It just looked like a very nice, cute swan that you get a, a little tap to. Look, I don't really care what a console looks like. Most of the time, when any kind of new design comes out, you get the audience going, oh, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. And then we all just get used to it. Like when the Xbox One came out, it was like, it's like a brick. And the same with the original Xbox. And basically every single Xbox has been like a murder weapon. I don't know why. That's just what they do. But I actually thought it looked quite nice. It was quite silk. I'm sure there'll be a black version as well. This one was in white because obviously all PlayStation consoles, aside from the original, well, basically since uh, PlayStation 2, they've gone for the black motif. But the most intriguing thing to me is that on day one, it's going to have a discless, discless edition. So, you know, it means you can download all your games. You're not going to have any way to put a CD, a DVD, a Blu-ray, and a CD. It's 1992. You're not going to have any physical media. And I love that. I was a big proponent of that when the Xbox One, yes, it was the Xbox One, uh, revealed that in their own event years and years ago. Obviously, there was a massive backlash to that, and Xbox changed their minds. I just think it's the future, right? That What I want in a dream world, and we're slowly getting there, is to have a Netflix service for games where you pay, and you know, EA have this and so on and so forth. But yeah, you pay a monthly fee, and you can just download whatever the hell you want. That's what I'm used to now with my movies and my films and my books, with things like Audible, if you like listening to audiobooks. So why the hell not with my games? And clearly Sony having both is the first step to actually leaving that behind entirely. And yes, what does that mean for game retailers? Not great, not good. There's a different argument there. But purely from you know, taking steps forward that I think the industry needs, I thought that was really cool. I really, really did. We don't know much else about it other than it's got ray tracing. I love how video games company do this. Oh man, it's got ray tracing. Like, do you think I know what ray tracing means? Ray tracing sounds like Dick Tracy's partner. He does have tests, but he won't bring her out of there. We gotta go in. Go in. It's ray tracing and Dick Tracy, investigators, detective extraordinaire. I don't know what ray tracing means. Just show me some good graphics. Although to be fair, they did do that too. I'm not going to go through every game, just the ones that stood out to me. Uh, I like the controller too. There was a lot of information about that. It was hilarious. At one point, it's like zoom around the back and it went USB port. And I was like, well, now I'm definitely going to buy it. <laughs> like a USB port's going to get me excited. We didn't get the price which I wasn't surprised about, but of course, it's always a shame because we'd love to know the price, right? Because we can get as excited as we want, but if Sony then go, it's $599, you're like, okay, what, should I sell a kidney or should I sell a liver or should I just chop my arm off? And you have to think about it and you have to find a buyer. And I imagine the market is down right now because of the global pandemic and not a lot of people have a lot of cash, just telling it like it is. But maybe it's $499, maybe it's $399 and we completely break the market, unlikely. In terms of the games, the ones that really stood out for me were Resident Evil 8 Village, I can never play that video game. Again, I'm going to imagine a lot of people watching this know my history with the genre of survival horror. Not good at it. And if you don't believe me, just type into your YouTube search bar right now uh, to... Two cowards play PT. You remember PT, count on the PS4. You will see me lose my mind. Can't handle it. Way too scary. Broke me. Broke me as a human being. And I'm already pretty broken as it is. But it just looked so good. It kind of looked like they'd taken elements of Resident Evil 4. Obviously, loads of elements from Resident Evil 7. But Capcom seems to have grabbed hold of that series after it was a bit lost in the wilderness for a while, given it a shake, and now it's really cool again. And in terms of visuals, holy crap, did that look good. And again, I can't play it. That's going to scare the absolute life out of me. But from a pure, visual, beautiful, looky thingy, absolutely, I mean, I can't 
It's so much difficult to appreciate what games look like now because really all games have looked good since, what, 2005 when the HD era came in? That was such a big jump from standard def to high def that even high def to 4K, it's just, it's not as amazing because it's never going to be. But even with this, some of the lighting, some of the ray tracing going on there and the shadows, it just looked brilliant and the character models especially. And you can take all of that and apply it to Hitman 3. Hitman 3 kind of sums up my issues with the gaming industry because technically it's Hitman 3 2 because it's the second Hitman 3 we've ever had. The first one was Blood Money, I believe. So it's just massively confusing, but who cares about that? It's just titles and names. Absolutely irrelevant. Any Everything that IO has done with the rebooted Hitman, we'll call it, I think has been incredible. If you have never played those games and you like open world experiences or games or sandbox games where you're just put into an environment and told to go and do whatever the hell you want you should be playing hitman it is so good and the amount of choices at your disposal are ridiculous and what they seem to have done here i think it's it coming out early 2021 something like that not that far away 2021 but if they take all of that and then use the extra power that the ps5 is clearly going to give them it could be unbelievable it may even be too hard because you're going to have too much choice and too much decision making. But I love Agent 47. Clearly, cosplay him as, him as him every day. Should do that. Get the tie and the barcode in my head. So yeah, I thought that looked badass. And while it's not my thing, even seeing Ratchet and Clank, I thought was... Again, it's not... I don't like those kind of games. That's not for me. But it was nice to sort of get a family-friendly, kiddie experience. And there were a few other ones. There was that destruction game that kind of looked a bit like Rocket League. It's just nice for kids and children to see that thing. Because it's much like wrestling, as we've talked about here all the time, because I love wrestling. Your greatest experience is of games is usually when you're younger. So you shouldn't forget about that demographic and that audience. So I thought that was quite nice. Uh, quite nice as well. We're not going to talk about Demon Souls Remastered, because I like these things to be positive. And if you don't know, I think the Demon Souls, Demons, uh, Dark Souls, whatever, Bloodborne, I think they're the worst games of all time. To the point I played through Bloodborne. Again, you can search for it. It's a video game with TV, Bloodborne playthrough. I played through all of Bloodborne just so that I could review it properly and prove that I wasn't just saying I hated it for lols. I genuinely despise it and I would give it a 4 out of 10. And I finished it. I finished it. The visual evidence is there. You can't say nothing. Also saw some footage from uh, Horizon Zero Dawn 2, which is called Horizon Forbidden West, I think. That's another one that looked incredible. Not my kind of thing. I played a bit of the original Horizon. Again, it just didn't sink its claws into me. I'm much more interested in kind of quirky games these days, which does make me an asshole, I know. And we did see a few of them. There was that one that kind of looked like a 90s cartoon that intrigued me. Uh, there was the other game that looked a bit like Zelda. I'll make sure I try and get clips or images just so you know what I'm talking about. There were so many games, it's impossible to remember the names. And there was the other one called uh, Revolt or Recontroller. It was the woman. It's a bit like Alien. It was like a woman on a ship she was, or a planet. She was dead. And oh, it, it just looked fascinating, right? It was one of those games where it was a little bit video games 101, but I was like, I'm kind of intrigued because I think a huge thing, if you kind of take these experiences I'm used to, but you up the atmosphere and you up the tension because of the power you have and the technology side of things, that may actually bring something new into games, which again is massively what I want right now. I want to be surprised. I want to have a controller in my hand and be like, although I understand this experience because I've been doing it for a long ass time, trick me, make me do new things. Like, you remember Metal Gear Solid, right? Metal Gear Solid back in the day. It did things you weren't expecting, even though it was just controller, game, console, and all of that. So hopefully we can use all this power to bring in those experiences, because then, as Sony kept saying throughout the presentation, we will be entering a new generation of, uh, of video games, because we're doing things we couldn't do before. Also found out there's going to be an enhanced version of GTA V, because if GTA V doesn't keep iterating on itself, the aliens are allowed to come down and kill us all. We'll never get GTA 6. It will just be GTA 5 until we're all dead. New Spider-Man game looked good. Uh, I thought the original Spider-Man game was great, so I have no doubt this one will be too. Deathloop was intriguing as well. It's by Arcane Studios, so it was very dishonored -y, and they probably went, don't call it dishonored. Dishonored didn't sell. Call it something else. But it also looks a bit like the club. If you remember the club, looked a bit like Wet, a game from Bethesda, which was vastly underrated. I thought it looked quite cool. You know, you have to get a first-person shooter in there as you do your racing game. And we had our racing game, Gran Turismo 7. Again, not really my thing. I'm more of a Need for Speed uh, type dude, even though Need for Speed has kind of gone off the rails. Bring back Project Gotham 
racing, I say. PGR 3 on the Xbox, best racing game ever. And there was a ton of stuff there, but I thought it was varied. I thought it was cool. I thought it was exciting. Uh, everyone seems to have the same reaction. Obviously, the biggest reaction was always going to be for how the console looked itself. But I'm excited. And I know when Xbox did their one a few weeks ago, which I should have reacted to too, and I didn't. Shame on me. There was a lack of gameplay. And there was still... It was more gameplay in this, but it was still shot in a way to make it look badass, right? That's just what we do with video games. But I am excited to see people actually hold a controller and playing it, especially in my own, like I say, my own world, to see how deep the, the visuals go. There was a Shinsuke Mikami game in there as well, which I don't remember the name of. But Shinsuke Mikami, for me, he does make weird, interesting games. So I'll be intrigued about that. And there you go. There's a PlayStation 5. Uh, a podcast is going to go up tomorrow. I should have said that earlier. The Week in Gaming or Simon Miller's Gaming Show. If you want to get my extended details, I'm going to have a guest on it. And we'll talk around about it for an hour or so. But it's exciting, right? A bit of doom, doom and gloom in the world right now. Why the hell not forget about it and enjoy a console that looks like a swan. Well, that's that. Thanks as always. I know it's a little bit different. Don't worry. We'll get back to the normal stuff after this. But how often does this happen, right? Not a lot at all. Like the video, share the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button so you can be caught up to date with everything or stay up to date. Patreon.com for us Simon316. And yeah, Simon Miller's Gaming Show will go live on Friday the 12th of June. I think that's tomorrow. Check it out. Listen, maybe you'll like it. Maybe you won't. If you don't, you never have to listen to it again. See you soon.